All right, it's the 21st of February, uh, 2021. So you guys have watched my new beekeeper series and you're wondering what's next. All right, well, you've, you've figured out what equipment to use. Um, so you, you've got that covered. Um, you get your bees ordered and they're coming but they won't be here for a while. So you've figured out where you're gonna put them. Um, that's all covered. Um, but again, there's a month and a half left, so before the bees get here, now what? Well, if you want to be successful at bees, you need to get a network set up of people that know more than you do. And a lot of you, the new beekeepers, that's fairly easy to do. Um, all of us out there that are putting YouTube videos out are doing it to help new people learn and to learn ourselves. Uh, as the new stuff comes out and then people get a new idea, and yeah, it, it's, it, this is how it grows. This is what helps the bees. Um, social media, Facebook, Parlor, MeWe, all of them have great groups you can get on. Now, take everything you hear from those people with a grain of salt. Sometimes that guy that acts angry, he's been drinking. Uh, probably a nice guy tomorrow morning, but his comment was rude and inappropriate. It happens. Um, take it with a grain of salt. Get answers from a lot of people. Weigh it out. Most of them will tell you that this is how they do it. You figure out what works for you. You try all the different stuff. Uh, there's bee clubs. Most every area has a bee club. Uh, there'll be an 80-year-old guy in there that's been doing bees for, for 60, 65 years. And he'll be happy to come help and answer your questions if you're acting like you want to learn. Uh, and a lot of those bee clubs work directly with the extension office from your uh, state universities. And, and that's a great place to get information and talk to people who know what they're doing. Um, but. A lot of those clubs aren't up and doing much this time of year and with the coronavirus thing they're not having meetings so you don't get on the other social media get on YouTube and watch inspection videos if you don't go in your hives you will not keep hives you have to inspect them uh, I try to think of a hive as as cattle they're they're, they're our livestock and like any other livestock, you can't just turn them loose and leave them alone. You throw a cow in the pasture, but you never go look at that abscess or get it any antibiotics when it needs it or make sure its water is running, uh, make sure it has grazed all the grass out of the pasture, make sure the fences are up. You're not going to have a good cow or any cow. Um, same goes with growth. If you're not watching the growth and all of a sudden your half an acre has 10 cows on it, and you don't fix it, they're, they're not going to stay. They're going to bust the fences down, go to look for something to eat. And your hives will swarm if you're not watching them. And the people will tell you, oh, swarm is natural. Yeah, it's great. Um, and it is, but it doesn't help you build hives. And if they swarm enough times, eventually they won't requeen and you'll lose that hive. That's nature. And then someday some other hive, bees will swarm back into that box. But that's not the whole idea of beekeeping. So learn by watching the inspections, learn what you're looking for, learn the language of the hive. If you don't know how to ask me a question, I can't give you an answer. If the thingy bob you saw looks funny, it doesn't help me come up with the reply for you. If you tell me your milk brood looks uh, dark and they're dying, then I can come up with some answers, but I don't know what thingy bob is. Um, you need to know the language in order to communicate with people that know more than you and to get answers. Um, you, you need to learn what you're looking at in there. You need to learn what a brood pattern looks like. You need to learn what the difference between uh, worker brood and drone brood looks like. Uh, and you're gonna see that on people's in inspection videos. Um, and and with that, knowing what you're looking for, you can make a plan. 
you make a plan to go into your hive. If you don't have a plan, you're not going to learn anything. You're going to go through the hive, you're going to look at bees, you're going to close the hive up, and you're going to go, what did I see? Hell, I don't know. Um, I saw a bunch of bees. Did I really look at the brood? No. Did I look for the queen? No. Um, were the bees healthy? I don't know. How much brood was there? I don't know. Were they bringing in pollen? Did they have open honey um, and nectar, light nectar coming in? I don't know. Didn't look for it. I just looked at the bees. I did that a lot when I was in learning bees. I had them here to do. I was just in them. They were cool. Okay. So if you're standing at the hive, you know, I'm going into that hive because they're cool and I want to see the bees. But you have something to look for while you're in there. You will come out with more education. You will know, yes, I inspected the brood and I liked the brood pattern. And I saw eggs. Didn't find the queen. Hell, I forgot to look for. But I saw a brood. Uh, they've got some drone coming. I saw some drones. I saw some drone brood. You've got something to write down in your record book. So the next time that you go to get in there, you can look at your records. You can see, okay, this is what I saw last time. What am I looking for this time? You can put notes on the frames. I did it in the beginning. This frame's being drawn out. This frame has drone brood in it. This frame is, is pollen and honey. Um, so that when I went to look at it again, was it the same? Was it improving? Was it growing? Um, learn what your bees are telling you. Um, if you're in there too long, they're going to tell you, get out. You've been in here too long. Uh, they're they're going to start harassing you. They're going to start, you know, doing the flybys and banging off your head. Um, that tells you you've been in there too long. Get it closed up. Um, leave them alone. But they can also tell you if they're queenless. They can tell you if there's a dearth on. They can tell you if there's a flow on. Um, you need to watch and see, do I have explosive growth going on at this time? Do I need to get more boxes on them? Um, do I have a failing queen? Um, is she struggling? Are they, are they making queen cells, but they're not going to uh, swarm. They're superseding her. They're going to get rid of her. She's not doing well, and I've caught that before. And pulled that queen out and put her in a nuke that she did fine in the nuke. She just couldn't keep up with a 10-frame box. Um, so, you, but you need to watch. Uh, you, you can't learn this without getting your hands in the boxes. It's just the way it is. So, knowing what you're looking for when you get in there will help. The other thing is, you're going to want to be in your bees two or three times a day. But if you only have one hive, you can't do that. That really irritates them. <laughs> Even once a day is too much. That's why I got more hives because I wanted to go in the bees more often and I didn't want to irritate them. So keep that in mind in your plan. Um, am I going to try to split them so I have more to look at? Am I going to try to pick up some more? Am I going to try to learn to catch some swarms? Um, what, what do I want to do in my bee program to get enough to keep me happy um, and to keep my bees alive? So the more resources you have, the easier it is to keep them alive. If you've got 20 hives and you go out and one is gone, they just absconded, uh, they died, it's not near as devastating as if you have one hive and you go out and they did that. And again, don't look at the money as money thrown away as loss. Look at it as education because that's what it is. And bees die. It's not always your fault. Um, it's what they do. So. Again, learn, get ready, take notes when you watch videos so that you can write down decent questions, so that you can remember what those questions are when you get a chance to, to ask them. Um, all this stuff's important. Uh, don't, don't get in arguments about what bees do and don't do because bees don't read the same books. They all do something different. Um, there's research that shows bees don't reuse wax. There's videos out there of bees reusing wax. There's videos that, there, there's research that shows that bees don't store pollen from patties. Um, and then there's videos out there where there's obviously pollen patty in the frames. Um, 
John at Baddest Bees has one of those. But he also says, I don't know that they, this is the norm. This is what my bees did. You know, you have to go with the research, but don't expect it to always be the same. This is, this is what we learn with bees. Um, and there's a lot of them will get on their high horse and tell you, oh, this is an absolute. This is, it happens every time. Uh, one queen to a hive. Well, you can listen to Michael Palmer who actually checked his thousand some hives and almost a third of them had two queens in operation in the hive. So one queen to a hive is not necessarily the norm um, or the law. So uh, this is bees. Is bees do what they do. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. Don't get frustrated. Learn. Education takes time and costs money. Learn. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, I'm getting more subscribers. That's kind of cool. Um, like them if you, if you can. Comment if you can. That helps more people see them. So, uh, anyway, spring's coming, guys. Hope we're all ready.